A few years ago, shortly before Epiphany, when Sarah and I were making paper nativity sets with our oldest niece and nephew, our niece asked us a challenging question. What about King Herod? Why isn't there a King Herod figure to cut out in color? It's a good question, and one that requires us to think a bit for an honest answer. You see, I don't think I've ever seen a nativity set with a King Herod figurine in it. There isn't ever a Caesar Augustus figure either. And yet, there would be no Christmas story as we know it without these two rulers. The temptation to erase King Herod and Caesar Augustus from our Christmas stories is understandable. Their part in the story isn't pleasant to think about at all. And I'm glad there is Sunday school this morning because this really is a grown-up Christmas story not suitable for younger audiences. As you heard a few moments ago in our scripture, when Magi approached King Herod for help finding the Messiah, King Herod hatches a sly plan. He will help the Magi find the one they seek, provided that they come back and tell him where the child is. He tells the Magi that he wants them to come back and tell him where this child is so that he too can go and pay his respects. But really, King Herod has murder on his mind. He wants to get rid of the child so there will be no threat to his reign. He doesn't understand at all what Jesus will be about, that he is not that kind of king. His plan is a wee bit delayed by the Magi's dream, which tells them to go home by another way rather than reporting back to Herod. Sadly, however, the tyrant will not be thwarted for long. The Magi simply buy enough time for Joseph, Mary, and the baby to flee as refugees into Egypt. Joseph has a dream right after the Magi have departed, and he wakes Mary up in the night, and they flee to Egypt to escape until Herod dies a few years later. And when Herod realizes that the Magi have tricked him and they're not coming back to tell him where the child is, he's furious. He gives the orders to kill all male children under the age of two years, living in and around Bethlehem. The age of the children to be massacred was based on the date of the star that appeared as Herod had asked the Magi about it. This ending to the story of the Magi, which doesn't always get read, you notice it wasn't actually in the lectionary passage for today, is often referred to as the massacre or the slaughter of the innocents. It ends with Rachel weeping inconsolably for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Yep, the Christmas story ends with a massacre. I've told you this wasn't a story for small children. It's a horrible story, a tragic ending to the Christmas season, and I wish we could leave it out. Yet as people of faith, I don't think we dare ignore King Herod and his part in this story because, well, the world is still full of Herods. Innocent people are still being massacred, and millions of refugees find themselves miles from home because of oppression and injustice. As people of privilege, we might have the choice to look away. One of the hallmarks of privilege is that we don't have to notice oppression if we don't want to look at it. We have a choice about what we see. So if our own lives are going pretty well, we might think that we can just stay with the brightly lit Christmas trees and sing one more round of joy to the world. It requires effort for us to allow Herod to be part of the Christmas story too. But if we deny this other part of the story, then Christmas really isn't good news to the poor at all. And it won't help us build peace on earth. Absolutely, we need a young woman who dares to say yes when God asks big things of her. And a young man who has the courage to follow God's path even though it defies all conventional wisdom. Angels singing of peace on earth and goodwill to all and shepherds rushing to greet the baby, and a star in the night sky leading wise travelers from afar with precious gifts. These stories have power and they invite us into the beauty and wonder of God with us in ordinary yet miraculous ways. They are joy to the world indeed. 
But what we cannot do is leave the story there. We need to remember that this is also a story of true grit. Imagine how hard all this must have been for Mary and Joseph, not to mention the other parents in Bethlehem who don't get that dream to escape with their children. And we need to remember that it is also an invitation to find God, not just in stars in the night sky and angels, but in the refugee, the displaced person, the outcast. And it's a reminder to us that God stands with those people. It's also a challenge to us to be on the lookout for the Herods of this world and to be shrewd enough to thwart their schemes whenever that is possible and within our power. It's a story of civil disobedience. The call to be Christian people of hope, peace, love, and joy is a call not just for the times when that is an easy and pleasant thing to do, but also for the times when it requires us to courageously stand against the Herods of the world and stand up for the stranger, the vulnerable, the innocent, the outcast. We are a people who are called right from the beginning of our story to holy resistance. So this Christmas, we must remember that all is not right with the world. People are still suffering, some nearby and some far away. Injustice and yes, even evil, is still being promoted. Innocents are still being harmed. And our failure to pay attention to these things does not diminish their power. On the contrary, it helps them to grow and flourish. When our niece asked why there wasn't a King Herod in the Jivy set, if I remember correctly, I said something about him being the villain of the story and people not wanting to think about a villain at Christmas time. But justice is achieved more easily, not by ignoring the villains, but by standing up to them. So let's keep Herod in our celebration of Christmas, even though it isn't ever comfortable to do so, so that we might stand in genuine solidarity with those who continue to be harassed, displaced, oppressed, and otherwise ignored in our world. May it be so at Christmas and always. Amen.